Hey everybody, it's Robert coming to you from the Old Bird Farm and today we are back out on the farm with Honey I'm Home aka Woody or Woody aka Honey I'm Home or both. Yeah, yeah either way. Um, Woody is a local beekeeper and these are his hives that are out here on the farm. What are we going to be doing today? So today we're going to be uh, opening these boxes up and looking and seeing the condition the bees are in and we're also going to be harvesting honey today. We're going to do some extracting. We brought the extractor with us and uh, we're going to pull fall honey, spring honey, anything left over. We're going to check the health of the bees. Um, we're going to start, if we can, we'll start breaking these boxes down into a smaller compact form. So for fall and winter time, so they have uh, less air to keep warm and, and keep, uh, keep themselves in shape. So we'll start breaking these boxes down, taking any honey that we can, leaving them enough for fall. We actually have goldenrod is just starting to bloom. Uh, we always try to pull all the honey we're going to use before goldenrod starts. Goldenrod is very important for the bees' health for the wintertime, and it doesn't make a really good honey. It actually tastes pretty bad. So we try to get in here right at the early start of goldenrod season and get the honey poured off of them. So that's what we're doing today. Awesome. And I said you're a local beekeeper, but actually you do a lot more than that. Yep. You specialize in removals. We, we do structural bee removals. We do apiary management. We go and manage farms. We do pollination services. So we'll take boxes like these and take them out onto watermelon crops and cantaloupe and different farms that need them for pollination. That's awesome. Like that. so, All right. And we, we also do educational and we do a lot of uh, nonprofit work and do a lot of education for the youth. And you can check out down in the comments, I've left uh, all of Woody's links um, to, because you've got a YouTube and yep. Facebook and Instagram, right? Yep. And your website. Yep. So yes. you can check uh, Woody Absolutely. out. Absolutely. So. And check him out. He's fixing to have a bunch of beautiful honey too. So Yeah. So let's go get stung. Let's go do it. <laughs> so what we're doing here is we're building our flame. When it turns real dark like that, you start to see fire come out the top of it. It's called a flash point. And it also helps I just get smoke on us. If the smoke gets on you, it's wonderful because you're hiding all those odors again. So we're building our fire and there's a little bitty metal tray in the bottom of these and it actually holds the um, air pocket down here so it doesn't smother. So that's how you keep, that's how they stay going for a long time. So we can really pack these things down tight once we get them a good fire base going. You'll see how dark that smoke turns right before it's going to catch on fire. And just keep building it. And these are some boxes that we have not done nothing with for three years. They were out at a farm and I called them my doomsday bees. I just let them go wild and see what they would kind of see how they would survive on their own, get some feral genetics in there and just see how they managed it. Some did really well, some didn't make it. It's kind of crazy how some did, some didn't. So we've really, I've never, I haven't been in these boxes. Some of these boxes I haven't been in in three years. <sighs> Teddy long leg. So it's kind of neat, kind of curious to look at a couple of these. Bad news is they're so gummed up. He's been being not better for many years. Those are pretty lost to death. All right. Give them a little time to hang up, chew on that. Have a little smoke fist there. I'm about to get the prop on that one. Yeah, that's one with a lot of ants in it too. But it's neat how the they'll cohabitate. If they come up here, they'll attack them and die. But they'll live on top of these and not even mess with the bees. Kind of a neat little dynamic. I'll let them chew on that for a little bit. Oh wow. Big old spider. They propolized it. It was sitting in the front of the hive. What does that mean? That it was a spider and he was going there and made him a little nest or something. Yeah. And they propolized him in. They, they embalmed him. Oh. Crazy cool. Well, so far, they're not being horrible right now, so that's good. So there's a lot. They're actually doing a lot. Goldenrod's blooming. Chinese knotweed's blooming. There's a lot of stuff. The fall stuff starting to bloom. So a lot of them are out foraging right now. Okie dokie. Let's try to get everybody some tools and suited up. 
and these are a lot of these bees here have a lot of the carniola in them so that's when you can tell the, the italians don't propolize as much so that's how you can tell what kind of variety of bee you have too some of them just really propolize more than others and tell me again what this is this is a carniola next these are a mutt bee but they have a lot of the uh, carniola strain in them the Italians um, don't propolize as much. They won't gum this up as fast and as quick. And if you actually look, they've actually even chewed out. People don't realize, but those bees actually can, uh, chew, they'll chew through styrofoam, siding, that kind of stuff. They'll get most of that out of there. Unlike the, I don't even see how they just propolize. They seal these boxes. That's why at the end of the year, we don't um, start opening these up after, Usually after October 31st, usually Halloween, end of November, I try not to even open my boxes back up because I like to let them go ahead and seal it up super duper tight for the winter time. They'll go in here, any little draft they don't want, they'll close it all up. So we try to let them, after this time of year, we'll try to let them just keep this and keep it sealed. They may get a little, a little ornery. Yeah. And when we're doing this normally, I'm having bad hive etiquette, but normally what we do is you open these up away from your face. So you don't get a face full of bees if they are ornery. I already got my two to the eyeball today, so I'm good. I think I'm, I met my quota. I may have just jinxed myself though. All right, looking nice. Not a lot of resources on the top of here. We're gonna go through. We can actually go through, look at them quick, we'll just lift the whole box over. Instead of going through frame by frame, I'm going to go ahead and break this box down a little bit. See how these are lifting up, those aren't? Yeah. See? These have been so gummed together because they've been in here so long. So you can see just a little bit of drawn out honey there. And they've actually already used up that resource on that side or they haven't drawn it out yet. So just a little bit. We're gonna probably take most of this box. We'll probably try to take most everything out of this box with us today. Whatever, it depends on what we have down here. But most of this will stay with them. We're just gonna lay it on the floor, ground over now. And start stacking those in there. Okay. And go ahead and give me a little smoke on these ladies. Usually I always tell everybody, if you start seeing their little heads poke up looking at you, it's yeah. time to add smoke. Gotcha. Because they will start poking up looking at you. And now this is, you can see here, this is nectar. So they haven't capped this yet. So this is still wet honey that they haven't filled up and they haven't dried it out yet. So you have wet honey and then you have capped honey. And then you have really nice kept on here, right there. I took my quota to the face last and time. Yes, you so. did, dude. This, uh, today was not fun. So, see there's cat brood, so she's up here laying. See the babies right there? That's how cat brood. Gotcha. So she's up here laying, so we gotta be real careful. We can't take this whole box, because she's actually moved up here to lay. So we'll actually drop these down. So we'll leave that. We'll put those two frames we've got it, honey. We'll put the bright frames back in here. But that's even like Angela that is like, oh, she's close by because of that right there. We see where she's close by at. And that tells you, you have to be really careful that she's not. See, that's all wet. So right there, this is not dry enough to harvest yet because it's not been capped. If you get too much of this wet honey, yeah. When you're harvesting, your your honey will crystallize, and it's not, it's not good. Gotcha. But if we just have a few frames of brood and the rest honey, which we may have here, because I think that's what we're gonna have. Go over there and just throw it in that box. Beautiful. Now that's gorgeous right there. Yeah. All nice capped. That's that's a beautiful frame. So 
So I'm gonna get you. Yeah. All right. This box will not be going back on. So now we got that one. So it's gonna rotate. Now we we'll take that one. We'll put it in the trailer. Oh, that's 20. There's 30 pounds. 25, 30 pounds of honey there. Oh, Rich, we pull the truck down closer. We pull the truck down a little closer. What we're doing right here is just cleaning these frames off. And that right there will get rendered down into wax for candles. And look right down between these frames and see all the brood. I'll show, I'm going to show it to you. You can actually see this cat brood right there. So we may leave this one too deep for the winter time and just take that one box. So what I'm going to do right now, I got lots of capped honey in here. And uh, I'm going to just crack this whole box. I'm going to lift up and just see what's going on down in this box. Maybe clean up the bottom tray. And we'll leave this one for winter time. We'll let this one double deep over for winter time. And we'll, uh, if this one doesn't have a lot in it. This one's really slam packed. We may try to bust this one down. But I can kind of see down through it. I don't think it is. This is how we do this right here. And you can actually feel how, see this is almost completely dead out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one off. And if we don't have a lot of, see how they're running? That queen is over there somewhere. They're running, look at them. So she's over. That's a lot of times we look for the queen so we can actually see where they're where they're going to. Not a lot of brood, not a lot. Of, so we may be able to bust this down and actually swap this one over and make this the bottom one and take this box down and make it a one frame for winter time. So, and there's brood in this one. So I promise you that queen is in that one right there. So they're not even, so that what I was telling you before, sometimes they'll move up. So we're not even using this bottle box. So we're gonna take this. And what I'll do is I'll take one or two of these out of here and put that last two that they're actually using and swap boxes. Right. So now, magically, this is gonna be our bottle box. them chasing the high beetles into the corners mm -hmm. wrangling them beautiful yeah, are you trying to jinx me yeah. oh you put on oh your other one is that your oh your other one's right there if you're, are you doing a full body oh come on man Chicken. All right, so that's brood in this one, these two over here. So this is where she's laying at. We got a couple kind of duds over here. So what I'll do is I'll take, it does have some good honey stores here too. And we're gonna leave that for the ladies. Oh, that's actually got a lot of honey on it. I'm gonna leave that one. Take it out. Nice. Very nice. That one has brood on it. Get us some extra honey balls. And what I want to do is put those near the other brood. See that I have all the storage. So we're just gonna slide these down. Beautiful sacks of honey. They got gaggles of honey. Especially for fall coming into fall flow too. See, this one hatched out. The ones in the centers, they hatched out. So that's where all the babies hatch, and this is what they'll backfill with babies later on. But there's your brood. Slam full of brood. That's beautiful. I want to see that. There'll be more, all that over will be brood too. So they'll backflow, they'll backfill honey and brood in here. So we're gonna take that one. We're gonna go right in there. And we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I need to put one frame back in. We're gonna put this one back in right there.
We got 10 frames. This one's going to come out. And we're going to put all the bees back in here. And then we'll take these blank frame. We take them back to the house, freeze them for 24 hours. We put them back on in the boxes, put mothballs in them, wrap them up for the wintertime. So nice, bro. Good breakdown. What is this for? High beetles. They'll get their little legs trapped in that, and then the bees will go in there and uh, the bees will go in there and propolize them down to it. Unscented squickers. Usually in the corners because the bees like to drive into the corners. Right, it's one of our neat little tricks for high beetle management. The new thing a lot of people are doing, not new, I've heard it's an old wise tale or old folks tale, is peppermint candies. Putting peppermint candies in the corners. Peppermint, the, the high beetles don't like it. Something about it, but I've heard wonderful things about it. All right, so that was one hive down. We've got one hive. And we're really, yeah, it's one hive next one. And uh, we've done a lot on this too, really. So these, these are the main ones right here. Okay. Let's see what we got. <laughs> Right here, right? Yep. In the, uh, no, no, take, yeah. You can take it from out. So today we're out here at Old Bird Farm. Buddy over there on the other side of the truck. And, uh, get one? Yeah. Nice. I feel better now. <laughs> but I didn't get it. Did you squish it? The stinger? Okay. No, I put, I put my hand on the bee. <laughs> Especially when you push them all down like that too, you make them compact. Man, high beetles, all that stuff don't stand a chance. Man, no. Oh yeah. Man, you got so many places that brings them in. It's a whole lot of bees up there. A whole lot of bees out there. A whole lot of bees up there. There's no how many were up in the air. Yeah. So you get so like this, and focused on it. Yeah. And you stay, especially if you're like you're walking up out of a yard, it may look like a locust plague sometimes. Right. Imagine 150 days in a row with 20 guys working. Yeah. You can't even hear you can't even hear each other. There we go. Last one, I'll let the man with the gloves do it. Mm -hmm. Uh oh, yeah. I got one. I might be dumb, but I ain't uh, They say it feels good, but I don't think it feels too good. What's that? Getting stung. Oh no, I don't feel good. Whoever told you that lie? He hit me on the head one time about ten, ten times in one spot. I thought I was going to Had a good life. Still some if you do this, burn them, they'll fly across that. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense, um, too.
super duper careful. Be careful that one. If that's honey bound. Okay. She it's all honey bound. And that's busted. Yeah, take that with the box. That's all honey. That's all honey. So that's why they got hot on that box. She's laying, she's laying up there. That's, you can see those are one, two, three, oh, uh, brood. Mm -hmm. The baby head coming out, there's one coming out right there. Yeah, she was laying up here in this box. This is why some people use a quitting scooter. I like to let them lay up here and then they'll go in backfill. It's called the rainbow, look at the rainbow. So I actually lay the eggs and use the resources around it. So that's called the honey rainbow. Honey. Yeah, it's going to knock that one off, knock it down. I missed. Take that, yeah. We're gonna save this one, put these back in a couple hives. So this hive is super angry. Go ahead and uh, you got brood in that one. I can see brood at the top of that one. Yep. I'm sure you got brood in that one. We're not gonna break that one down to two today. I went to a lot of people aren't here. And that's the one that busted lid on it, right? So break it down. No, -uh, leave it just mm -hmm. like that. Okay. That's the one with the bad lid, the inner cover, right? Yes. So we're not gonna use the inner cover for that one. We're gonna use this top. These bees are very unhappy with us right now. Yeah. Not very happy now. It's crazy how one hive is so calm and the next one. You know, and you'll have a hundred hives in a row. Nice, 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 nice. That's what a lot of times they'll requeen them. You go and pinch the queen, put a new queen in, hold them interchange. Really? I'm ready. Alright, good job, Rich. Good job, Rich. Yeah, <laughs> great, Rich. <laughs> Alright, so put it back on. No. No, it won't fit over. You're good, look at all of them. Yeah, just bump them on the on the hood, on the top. Ready? I'm ready. You're ready. There you go. They'll climb in, fly in. So we uh we've got probably 20, 30, 40, 50. We got about 60 maybe 70 80 pounds of honey today off a couple of these hives we got several of them broken down for winter time got a couple angry ladies around me right now um so now we're gonna go back to the front and we're gonna take the uh mobile extraction unit we're gonna go up there and we're gonna extract some honey off the old bee farm awesome. bird farm all right guys we'll stay tuned for that next video how many times did you get stung I'm at one for today. I'm only at one too. Last time we did something like this, it was like three to the face. At least, at least, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm three for the day, one out here for the day. Right. So All right. We're doing it. That's it. All right. Let's go strike some honey. <laughs>